Welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to talk about history. If you are new, just pop it in for the first time. I have been doing a homeschool topic a day for this month of May. Today we're talking all about history. So we do history, well, let me take that back. We do the story of the world curriculum one day a week over here. But history definitely extends to more than just that day because we use living books to learn about history. It is engaging. It is my favorite subject now. And as a kid, it was my least favorite subject because we used textbooks in school. It was very dry. Um, now that I am a homeschooling mom, um, it's really becoming my favorite subject. I have really enjoyed learning about all of the things of the past because we learn in such an interesting way. We learn by not just memorizing lists of dry facts. Lydia, do you want to come join us? I'll get her. Elsie will get you. We don't just learn about a bunch of dry facts that we have to memorize, but we learn about the stories of the people and the events that happened in a really engaging way. So I like the Story of the World curriculum. She's ready for her nap. I kind of time our history sit down for Lydia's nap because, you know, obvious reasons. So she's about to be taken upstairs for a nap right now. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna show you how we use this book once a week. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. She's fussing a little bit. We'll see if she goes to bed. Um, okay, so what we do is um, we use this Story of the World curriculum. I read through the, I don't drop it, that's not recommended. <laughs> I read through the chapter, I read the full lesson. Some people divide up the chapter into two days or three throughout the week, however it works for you. I have found that I really like to just do it all um, in one day a week so that we can really just spend a lot of time that day. That's our history day. And so we read that lesson and then in this um, story of the world activity book, for each um, chapter, there are, um, wow, there's just so much information. There's review questions that you can ask the kids after you read to make sure they got comprehended what you read. Then um, there's a sample of the narrations, which I will get to in a minute. And you can see this chapter was divided into two sections. So there would be this review narration and then this review narration. So we kind of just read through the whole thing and then we'll just pick an area to, to dive in deeper about. We don't do the whole chapter in this method, we'll just pick one part of it. But you could very nicely divide this into two days in your week instead of just one. Then there is so much information here. There are all of these books that you could check out from the library, you know, when libraries, back when they were open. Um, other literature suggestions. We always do the map work. You want a book read to you? Yeah, I'm going to do it. Okay, just a minute. We always do the map work. I will show you about that. And then there's a coloring page, which, you know, in their haste, they've already started on. So kids will work on coloring pages while I read the chapter. And they don't have to color. If they just want to sit and listen, that's fine. But usually everybody chooses to color. Today they have gone a step beyond. We are so hooked on these Arteza art products. So they are using watercolor pencils, which I've talked about before, to color and then just lightly brushing water across I'm, there. I'm doing the opposite. You're doing the opposite. Dipping You're dipping them. This and then And then this, coloring with them for a retro color. rush. And then dip. Get to you want to do dip? Yeah. Okay, you can do dip too. Very, very Otherwise we just colors. use regular colored pencils to color these. They got too boring. Okay, and then if you're really feeling exciting, you can choose some of the pro projects to do. So Where this do talks about different um, yeah. things that you could make, or yeah. this is a paper mache that you could do. <gasps> oh, can we do that? Can we do that? Yeah, it says make an African pot with paper mache. And oh, we have all yeah. those ingredients, so we can do that. I keep cheap, um, just the cheapest white flour I can find on hand for projects like this. Okay. And then, yeah. yep, so that's, that's it. Cool. Although the countries all around can see China's huge size and marvel at the millions of people who live within its borders, the emperor knows that China's greatest accomplishment 
its books of poems and philosophy, its novels and histories are still scattered throughout the vast country, hidden away in, what do you think, Jeremiah? Where would books be hidden? In libraries. Bookcases. You're right. In libraries. In libraries. In 1772, after he had been on the throne for over 30 years, the emperor decided to gather all of China's greatest literature together in one enormous collection. Okay, so one thing that I do that I forgot to mention to you is I copy the maps and the coloring sheets at, I think, 70% on my copy machine. So this is how they come really big like this. And I copy them down to a small size. Samuel. The reason I do that is, um, two reasons actually. I found that whenever I was giving them giant full-size copy pages, a little of them were overwhelmed with just the amount there was to color. And also, when we're done with the map and the coloring page, they cut them out and they glue them onto one sheet of paper and then write a paragraph about that to go with it. So that way it kind of, um, we can fit everything on one sheet of paper, usually on the front and back, instead of having multiple sheets of paper in their history binders that we put together. So just a or little a, tip about that. Page. Right, or a whole page. So they are finishing up and doing a great job on these. Look, you should see mine. I'm done. Very this, nice. I think, is the best part. All right, I'm done. I Beautiful. had a little more detail to his face. And then... It looks fantastic. Yeah. China's so jam. crowded. That's China's why. Jam yeah, that's okay, why so we just hard. had a discussion. I was talking about how many people were in China at this time. So they looked up of the population of the Russia States. versus the United States versus China. It's and we are amazing. amazed at how many more people there are in China. There's like one billion and some people in China and there's only like, I don't know, three uh, million, 300 million. Three in the United States? No. no, in the United States we have seven. And what was Russia again? That's Russia. Yeah, what was Russia again? What's the population of Russia? As of 2020, the population of Russia is 146,745. Wow. Okay, so we read the passage. It was long. We had to get snacks in the middle. Um, everybody eat breakfast. It's just lunchtime now. We read the passage, and now we are going to go over some of these review questions and see what we learned. A couple people are still coloring. Silas decided he wanted to color a giant emperor. So Me he too, recopied too. it. Huge. And he's recoloring it. Mine's done. Mine's yeah, cut out. Mine's cut yep. Be be else, Bella's is, is finished and cut out and ready to glue on. So we're going to answer the review questions. And we're going to do our map work. So when we get to the map work, I just read it out loud and I tell them. I, I, I read all of this and then I say... Um, use a pen or a pencil and label, and then we go through it all. Okay, these two are chatty today. Are you too chatty? What are you doing with your shirt? You're losing your shirt. There you go. He's pulling it down. Are you, are you chatty? Let me see your picture. Me? No, Jeremiah, I haven't looked at his yet. The big one. Oh, you're coloring a big one, too. That's the thing today? Okay. We don't normally yeah. color big ones, but... I started in... Ooh, he looks fierce. fierce. I looks really fierce. Wowzers. Very creative. We don't normally color giant um, coloring pages, but <laughs> they're having fun. One person did it, so everybody's doing it, and it's really fun to see. So. Yeah. Okay. See the Chinese dragon. Yeah. Mhm. Did the jump. So just like in our story, the dragon represented the emperor. And there's the dragon today. Okay, we had to take a quick break to watch a dragon DVD so that we could help some some people 
cheer up over here. And also, I need to go change a diaper. So they're gonna watch that dragon, not DVD. Did I say DVD? Yeah. yeah. It's a YouTube video. It's a YouTube video. So they can watch that parade, that Chinese parade. Excuse me, guys, I'm gonna squeeze behind you. They can watch that Chinese parade while I go change a diaper. And then um, the last thing that we do is put together our notebook pages. And so they'll glue on their picture that they colored the map that we completed. And then they'll just write, um, for my youngest kids, they'll just copy a sentence about something they learned from today. They'll just copy it out. Up to my older ones, um, Bella will usually write like a one side of a notebook page on something that we learned. And so to help them, because sometimes they get a little overwhelmed. We take in a lot of information. You can't grab that. <laughs> yes, you need a diaper. We take in a lot of information during this hour, and sometimes they, they can be really overwhelmed on where to start. And so to help them, I um, I get a, like a dry erase board, and we will read the little summary that's in the activity book of whatever whatever we're gonna write about. So we don't write about the whole thing. So we'll pick one thing. So today we'll probably write, I try to pick the easiest thing. Today we'll probably write about the emperor who um, went on a search to, thank you Elsie, went on a search to um, find all of the greatest literature in China. And so we'll read that little summary of that part. And then I will jot keywords about it on this um, dry erase board to make it really easy for my older kids to kind of start pulling from that to write a paragraph or two about what that was. And usually, once I get them going, then they do just fine and, and complete it. Um, but that kind of helps simplify all the information we read down into something that's more concise and that they're able to um, process on their own. So it's a good skill, good practice uh, that we do. And so, of course, like all of our things in our learning, I try to make it as painless as possible so that they can enjoy it and grow in it. Then we'll put all of those, we put the papers into um, plastic page protectors in a binder. So they have all their history pages in their own binder um, as a collection of what they've done and what they've learned. Oh, one thing that I wanted to add is the story of the world. If you've never used this um, curriculum before, the very first book, I skip the very first chapter because it just presents a different view of the beginning of the world than I wanted to pr present to my kids. So I just skipped over that chapter and moved to chapter two and then past that it's been great. We're partway through book three and really enjoying it. I like how Jason just pops his head in here. The parade? <laughs> you knew I wouldn't miss it. I, where did the parade go? <laughs> Where's the parade? <laughs> I actually ran out to talk to him while he was working and came back in and there's like a parade going on here. That's what I get for leaving for two minutes. <laughs> this guy is not doing what he's supposed to be doing. Leo, we're not doing that right now. Is the parade coming back? Did I miss the parade? Is it over? Okay, we'll wait. The parade music is still going here. Authentic parade music. <laughs> kids want to do this, so we're doing Woo! Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, Bella. I know, Bella thinks of all the fun ideas for the kids. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you guys. She is a great teacher. Woo! <laughs> I know, Be Bella makes it fun. James is thrilled, Bella. Do you see his face? <laughs> this is so fun. <laughs> you kind of missed the point. It's Chinese Dragon Parade, James. Not horsey. I totally forgot why Jason popped his head in. It was for our massager, our back massager. He has a headache, so he's having a massager sent out to his office. I will run out there in a minute and show you how this massager works because we like it. We like it. So I'll, I'll go out there in just a minute as soon as I get them started. That parade is growing in there. They have two more kids now attached to that dragon. I hope it doesn't end badly. Somebody crashed into a wall or something. But I'm going to walk out to Jason's little office space in the barn. This is where he's been working ever since the quarantine. He came home to work and set up a little office space here. Because we were sent this massager from 
Tiscare, I think is the company. You can find it on Amazon and I can put the link in the description box. But I actually used it this morning. It just coincidentally, both of us needed it today. I used it this morning because I woke up hurting so much in my neck. Um, Lydia's checking things out back there. Just my neck and my upper shoulders. I could not turn my head, I was hurting so much. And so I remembered, okay, I need to get this thing out. It's just a band. Instead of a massaging chair, it's just kind of like a band that you hold on you. And it massaged so much that it loosened all that up. I just kept holding it in the tight spots, loosened it all up until I'm feeling good. And so I just thought of that again when Jason came in looking for it. Because why did you... Why do you... Oh, I it? want it. You had a headache? Yeah, I have a headache. It's like all kind of like tension down on my neck and head or whatever. And I haven't been drinking enough water. Right, so you're drinking your water and I'm you got all this water. massager. So you can see That's it's right. crazy. It has these like ball things that move around. There's different control. Where's the control? Yeah, the so the here? settings, like, I'm just now getting a hold of it. There's heat, of course. I don't, I'm not a big fan of that personally, but you can increase the speed, medium, low, and high, and then you can change the rotation of it. So if it's like, oh, it's pinching when it goes this direction, you can change it the other way. And then you can use this to pull on it if you want it tight yeah. or just rest. And then, yeah, you can figure, oh, like I want it at a different angle. Uh -huh. Or, or down on your lower back. Yeah. The nice thing about it is that it doesn't take up a lot of space. <laughs> right. Because we live in a small house and those big chair massagers are really we, wonderful. We just donated one. Yeah. Because we, yeah. we're done with it. It's too much room. Yeah. Takes up too much we room. needed we needed something small so this is pretty perfect yeah. for us yeah for this for this situation it's perfect my mom has like the full-fledged neck shoulder whatever and it's great because when we go to our house I enjoy that. <laughs> we get, right. right and this comes with um it plugs into the wall but you can also plug it into the 12 volt outlet in so your, basically in your, in your, in your car. car yeah you it can, runs on 12 volts so the power supply in your car is 12 volt too. which is great because MacGyver people like me can make it run off of a car battery <laughs> in the middle of the woods. Okay, that's camp. a different oh. story, though. Okay. But, yeah, if you're needing a little massager, check out the link I'll put down there. Maybe it's for you. Okay, I'm going to head back inside now that I got that taken care of and see if they're all still alive. <laughs> Sometimes whenever the fun keeps going and there's a lot of kids in a small space, it could end in a minor injury, but... Let's see how they're doing. We'll look right through the window. Are we still having fun in here? Oh, look at this. Oh, wow. Go, go, go. This does not sound like Chinese music anymore. Mom, it's the final countdown. Probably not. <laughs> Good. I'm glad it's still going well. <laughs> Okay, so that sums up history for us on our big history day of the week. On other days, we are always reading books that are true. Like right now, we're reading about Richard Wormbrand. So that's a true story about an incredible man in history. So the, that, of course, all falls into the category of history. But this is our one day a week that we really take the time to intentionally go through a chronological history of the world. We write, we do um, drawings or crafts or recipe. Um, today the recipe is for yak butter tea. We don't have any yak butter, but we do have regular butter, so we'll give that recipe a try. See what that's like. <gasps> Are you ready to go back inside? You were so happy. Don't get sad on us now. <laughs> So I will see you all tomorrow. Actually, the topic tomorrow is nature study, but I feel like I covered that yesterday with my science. So I thought that tomorrow I would just kind of give you a day in the life look at um, one day of our direct, delight directed learning here and how things kind of go at our house from morning, you know, through the afternoon or we'll see. We'll see what I come up with, but that's kind of my idea for tomorrow. Um, or maybe we'll take you out for a hike through the woods and, and kind of let you go on a, a nature hike with us. Hmm. I'll have to think about which one I would rather do. What would you rather see? Let me know in the comments and I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye-bye.